This is part four in my How To Guide, a series of videos designed to help you navigate and find your way around the recently released Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you'd like to catch up with other videos in the series, there'll be a link at the end of this video and also in the notes below. And today it's all about managing and getting to grips with the weather in your sim. Out of the box, Microsoft Flight Simulator has one of the most detailed and variable weather systems compared to other flight sims in and around its price category. And to a large degree, it punches well above its weight, particularly in terms of graphics and lighting representation, and the accuracy within the sim continues to improve. I often fly using live weather, but it's not always practical to do so. If the weather outside isn't suitable for a particular VFR or IFR flight that I'm planning, then I need to go into the presets and set up ideal conditions. Or maybe I'm just looking to have a bit of fun or a challenge and I want to change the weather. In this video, we're going to be looking at how do we do that, what are the parameters and what are the options available. A warm welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. Let's jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator and let's get started. To demonstrate the weather, we need to set ourselves up in the sim. From the world map, I'm going to choose an aircraft from the top left hand corner. And as we're more interested in looking at the weather, I'm going to choose a small aircraft with good cockpit visibility. The icon A5 will do nicely. Back to the world map and it's time to choose an airport. Following the Sims World update for Japan, I've chosen Romeo Juliet Delta Kilo Kamigoto Airport. Ideally located to demonstrate the various aspects of the weather. High and low level terrain and partially surrounded by the sea. A small regional airport situated in the southern part of Japan and not far from Nagasaki. Let's now set our flight conditions by clicking on the top right hand corner icon. My sim is currently set up for live weather. If you are on live weather, simply clicking preset under weather and time does not change it to preset weather. There are a variety of presets available ranging from clear skies all the way through to stormy. These can also be set in sim, which is what we're going to be doing. So I'll start off with clear skies. Click close or backspace and now to set up our aircraft position. When setting up a flight, if you choose a runway departure, you'll start with your engines running. If you choose a parking, well, you'll start from cold and dark. But we're not going to do either of those. Using the map as a guide, I'm going to move slightly away from the airport and I'm going to left click on a spot and then set that as my departure point. This will automatically start me in the air and with my engines running. Planning a flight like this is great if you're short of time, want to set up and practice a particular landing or just cruise through your favorite area. I've now selected Kamigoto Airport and I'll set that as my arrival. As you can see, we're not far from Nagasaki. So we're now set up with a custom departure point directly to the airport. It also says we'll be airborne at 1500 feet. But this information is a little buggy. It's best to click on nav log. And there you can see that we're one nautical mile away from the airport, but at an altitude of 7500 feet. For the weather demonstration purposes, that's too high for me. So I'm setting my cruise altitude to 1000 feet. 
This also set my heading at zero degrees, even though Kamigoto is at 169. No problem, we can fix that in Sim. So with the mouse, let's click on Navlog and that will take us back to the world map. We're almost ready to fly, but there's one more thing I need to do before we get into the sim. Being in a light aircraft and pushing the weather to extremes, I need to adjust my damage levels. From the options menu, choosing assistance and choosing failure and damage. Normally I wouldn't do this, I'm only doing this for the purposes of demonstration in this video. That's now done, apply and save, and time to go back to the world map. We click on the welcome or home tab, and back into the world map. And we're nearly ready to go. One more thing to do, I'm just going to adjust the time to make sure that we're in daylight so we have good visibility and can see the various weather changes that we've made. Something around midday will be fine and let's go fly. Because we set a custom departure point, we can see that the engines are running and that we're positioned at altitude. Just what we wanted. We're a tad under 1500 feet, so let's click on ready to fly. And as soon as we do, we're in the cockpit and flying. To hold our position, I'm immediately hitting the Y key to put me in slew mode. I've done this again just for demo purposes, and so I can position the aircraft just as I want it. If you're not familiar with the slew commands, hit escape and then the controls tab. In my particular case, I've got a controller set up to control the slew modes. But for you, it may be your keyboard, so select the keyboard. Tab from the top menus. We'll then collapse all the menus to make navigation easier and make sure the filter is on all. We can now see the main menus and we'll choose camera and then slew mode. And here we'll see all the different mappings for different movements once in slew mode. You can use these default mappings or you can set up your own, as demonstrated in one of my previous how-to guides. Once familiar with the key mappings, we can hit go back and then resume to take us back to the flight. I'm still in slew mode, so using the controls, I'm able to change the altitude up, down, and able to change the direction of the aircraft as well. As we saw in the navlog, I'm facing away from the airport, so I'm going to turn the aircraft around so that it's facing the airport. The reason I'm showing you all this is not to demonstrate the weather, but to show you how quick and easily you can set yourself up in midair in a flight for a quick touch and go or other challenge that you want. But you don't need the hassle of all the takeoff, etc. My final step is to choose active pause from the top menu and take it off slew mode by hitting the Y key again. And I'm back in the cockpit facing the airport. We're ready to test the weather and also nicely set up for a quick touch and go if we wanted to. All the weather settings and variables we saw earlier are available in Sim from the top toolbar and we click on weather. The advantage of doing it in Sim is that we can see the impact of any changes that we make. If you can't see all the menu, pull it down from the base. The menus in Microsoft Flight Simulator have a tendency not to fully expand. The top tab has a selection of weather presets, and we can of course make our own. We're on clear skies and let's now choose few clouds. As each preset is chosen, so the variables on the right and left hand side change accordingly and all are individually configurable, depending on your preset. Let's go back to clear skies. With no clouds, if we set the precipitation or the lightning, there's no impact. Why? Because we've got no clouds. Let's go back to the top tab and choose few clouds and try that again. Now we've got some clouds and let's test for rain and there it is. There's rain coming in. Let's jump into the cockpit quickly and just check that it is raining. And yes, we can see that the rain is on the windshield. The depiction of rain on glass is amazing in the sim. Anyway, back to our external view. And we're demonstrating the benefits of making changes in sim and we can see the immediate impact. Let's now have a look at some of the other presets, scattered clouds. We can see some of the configurations have changed, including the cloud base. This is broken clouds. And let's have a quick look at the cloud setup whilst in broken clouds. Wind and cloud options are shown on the left hand side. Cloud on the right, wind on the left. By clicking on one of the cloud icons, we can see the particular settings relevant to that cloud layer. 
And once again, these are fully configurable. We can adjust the depth of the cloud layer and get a graphical representation of that by adjusting the top and bottom altitudes for that base layer. The scatter option allows us to change the configuration of how the cloud is displayed. But as far as I know, you can't choose the different types of clouds represented. The coverage bar determines the level of density of that particular cloud layer. There are a number of other methods that we can use to change and adjust the cloud layers. I stand to be corrected, but I think only three cloud layers are available. I'll just increase the depth of this cloud layer and then going along and left clicking and holding down the mouse button, I can manually move the cloud layer. And as we do so, we can see the changes visibly happening in Sim. So a preset will give you a basic configuration and then you can change that to suit what you're looking for. And this combined with the other configurations gives you an almost infinite variable options available for your weather. Let's go on and look at some other presets, high level clouds. And if we wanted to, we could click on the individual cloud icons for the details of those respective layers. Let's now move on to overcast, something a bit more dramatic. This could be an amazing start to setting up a difficult landing challenge. Now on to rain. And we see the rain is set to max, so visibility is noticeably reduced. Now on to snow. This is exactly the weather the Icon A5 doesn't want to be found in. This would certainly spell trouble for the pilot. Let's just improve visibility a little bit. We're going to turn down the amount of rain so we can take a look at the snow. The amount of snow shown in Sim is variable by adjusting the slider on the snow depth bar. So let's go up to the bar and turn it all the way down and the snow is gone. As we move the snow depth slider and so the graphical representation of the snow increases accordingly. And it does vary slightly by altitude. The scale on the snow slider varies from 0 up to 100 centimeters in terms of snow depth. Let's now take a look at some of the other options available to us. Aerosol density determines how many foreign particles there are in the air, such as dust and so on, and can dramatically change the lighting within the sim. The higher the aerosol density, the more likely you are to get contrails. Whether this works in sim or not, I'm not sure. So if you want that amber desert feel, turn it up to 100%. Precipitation we've already covered and again the slider varies the amount of rain. The same applies to the lightning. And once again the graphical representation of the lightning is done extremely well. There's a preset Stormy that we haven't looked at. I'll leave you to discover that preset but there's lots of lightning in that preset as well. The ISA degree C is the International Standards Atmosphere setting and this is directly linked to the temperature at mean sea level. By adjusting one slider we adjust both. Turn the temperature down and we can ice up. And the last bar on the right hand side is pressure. This is your baromic pressure that you would use to set your instruments to reflect your altitude accurately at any given point in time. You're not stuck just with these presets. If you've varied the configuration, by clicking on this icon on the top menu bar, you can then choose a name for your preset and save it for future use. This would be ideal if you wanted to set up variable weather conditions and practice landings, takeoffs, or any other type of maneuver. Or maybe crosswind landings. And speaking of wind, well, let's have a look at the wind setups within the sim. By clicking on the wind icon, it brings up the details applicable for that wind layer. You can add additional wind layers by clicking on the add wind layer. By default, it goes over the top of your last wind layer. You then click on it with the left mouse button and drag it up. Each wind layer has two categories, the wind itself and the gusts. Changing the wind layers has a direct impact on the water and the trees within the sim. And obviously the aircraft. To more easily demonstrate this, let's head downstairs towards the water. And this will let us see a graphical representation of the impact of the wind within the sim. The wind speed is currently two knots and there's a gentle ripple across the water's surface. Let's now turn this up. And as we do so, we will see the surface change in reaction to the wind. 
Now at 6 knots and a little bit more choppy. At 11 knots we can see there's quite a dramatic difference. If you're in a boat and anything like me at this level, well, it's sick bags at the ready. Let's now dial it up to something around a gale force, just under 60 knots. And we can see the large swells and white caps. Let's now turn it all the way up to 150 knots. And the graphical representation is excellent. Not that anybody could actually land in 150 knot wind. In addition to just setting the wind speed, there's also the gusts. And the gust settings are variable in terms of frequency, which is measured in seconds, from 0 to 60. And the gust speed is expressed in percentage up to 200% as a maximum. Dial up your gust settings and it can make for some very interesting and challenging landings. The direction of the wind is also variable. Left click and hold the mouse button down and both the arrows for the wind and the gusts can be changed. A nice quick easy way to set up those crosswind landings. To return to the main menus all we need do is click on the settings bar. And we're back to where we started. One final setting is the altitude calculation. Above mean sea level or above ground level options are available. To demonstrate some of the things we've been through today, I have set up a landing challenge for the Icon A5 at Kamigoto. The A5 is a light aircraft and my initial attempt ended badly. So I've had to dial back the settings a little bit. Anyway, let's give it a go and wish me luck. The settings I've used are shown on the weather tab. Struggling to hold the line, you can see how gusty it is by looking at the windsock. We're down, brake, 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 nearly out of runway. Luckily this will stop quickly and flaps away so the gusts don't blow me over. The weather is an important dynamic in the sim and I hope this short demonstration has helped in some small way and it's a great way to spice up your flight simming. There's an area we haven't touched on in this video and that's add-on third-party applications. I'm aware there's a number out in the market already and there's even more still in the pipeline. I haven't got any personal experience with any of these packages at this point, so I'm not really qualified to comment at this time. And perhaps it will be the subject of a future video. If you've used an application and you're impressed with it, well, please leave the details in the comments below. If you'd like to see more in my how-to guide series, I'll leave a link to the playlist at the end of this video. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Take care, see you again soon and bye for now.